How many religious people we got here this morning? Don't, 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 don't raise your hand. <laughs> we don't want to be religious. We want to be godly. Amen. Amen. And, I, and I looked at Jesus and I looked at the people of the day, the scribes and the Pharisees and the, the big shots and the big wigs and those that should have known better. And I noticed something. Some people were repelled by the, can't, do we dare call them Christians of the day? Or should we just stick with the religious people of the day? Either one, right? But they were repelled, not drawn to. But Jesus came on the scene, and it didn't matter who they were, what they were, they came to him. And he did not turn them away. Where the Christians or, or the religious people of the day, the scribes and the Pharisees, would walk to the other side of the street because they didn't want to get themselves dirty, Jesus would write in the sand. Jesus would spit in the sand. Jesus told stories, tales of a people that did not worry about where they came from. I was thinking about the, the prodigal son, how that he, when he saw his son coming from afar off, he didn't close the doors. <laughs> he didn't lock the windows. He didn't pour salt all over the place. He ran out and met him. And he fell on, his, fell on him. In other words, he kind of just hugged him with everything he had. And I think that's the way we should be. I was reading a scripture this morning in the book of Acts. Yeah, 1727. It says that they happily felt after him. They happily felt after Christ. Happily. It's like they were blind looking for something. What, what are they feeling? What, what do you think attracts people more? Ice or fire? Depends on the weather, right? <laughs> if it's hot out, then give me some ice. If it's not, give me some fire. But generally speaking, don't people go to the fire to get warm and to get light? And I was thinking of the scripture in the book of Proverbs that said, our path should shine, shine, shine more and more. It should shine. What happens when things shine? People notice it, amen? People see it. People go start looking at it and start coming toward it. They, they may not know what it is, but they're coming toward it because it's shiny. It's something that caught their attention. I think that Jesus caught the attention of a whole lot of people, amen? Let me ask you a question. Does your life catch the attention of people? Does it draw them or does it repel them? I was thinking about the scripture in the book of James. It says, if we fulfill the royal law, according to the scriptures, what will we do? We will love our neighbor as ourselves, as, as, as thyself. And if you love your neighbor as yourself, what do you do? You're doing okay. You do well. Well, I looked up that word love. How many knows there's different kinds of love? There's Eros and Storge and Philia and, and what was that other one? Oh, you know that one. What makes agape so different from the other ones? Amen. It's God's love. It's that God type love. It's, that, it's not the normal everyday type love. It's, it's the love that says I will give my life for you. It's the love that says, I will lay down my life for you. It's, it's the kind of love that says, it's okay, I'll get dirty too with you. If necessary, I'll get in the muck in the mire and lift you out and set you on a solid place to stand. And I'll wash you off and I'll give you a clean robe. Isn't that what he did with the prodigal son? Isn't that what he did with the guy in the book of Proverbs? He picked him up out of the muck in the mire and set him on a solid rock. And that rock is Christ. I think we... Can I be blunt? Is it alright if I'm just blunt? I don't know any other way to be. <laughs> Sometimes I think that our love begins to decrease instead of increase. 
Our love, instead of shining brighter and brighter until a perfect day, begins to get duller and duller. Like, like, like the batteries in a flashlight. The light starts out real bright, but if you leave it on for a while, you watch it dim out. Sometimes I think that we've been in this way for so long, we've walked with Christ for so long, we, we sometimes forget to let our light shine. Not just shine, but shine bright. Not just uh, shine, but shine with the agape love of Christ. Didn't he say that we should walk in his steps? <coughs> Didn't he say that we should follow his path? Amen. Didn't he say that we should walk like... Didn't Paul say, follow me as I... Follow fo what was Christ like? Sometimes we think that we, we remember Christ as with a cat of nine tails beating out the people out of the sanctuary. Amen? That's fun to do sometimes. Uh, and here, here's, the, here's the catch. That's not the law. That's the exception. That's right. I read the scripture and, and I wrote them all down or I typed them all down. It would probably be easier if I wrote them. Eight times I read Matthew 9, 36, Matthew 14, 14, Matthew 15, 32, Matthew 20, 34, Mark 1, 41, Mark 5, 19, Luke 7, 13, Luke 15, 20. He was moved with compassion. Amen. He was moved with agape love. I looked up these words and, and, and I was kind of shocked to realize that a lot of the words that I thought were like filial love and, and just love between brothers and love between uh, uh, relationships went far deeper than that. I was reading the scripture let me just read it here. Galatians 5, 6, and 7. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. How many knows what faith is? It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. How many knows what work means? Work. It's not just toil with, yeah, well, that's what I thought too. <laughs> I have a tendency when I read a scripture and I want to know about it, I tear it apart from front to back and back to front until I understand it. Work means in the Greek to be energized. To be energized by love. By agape love. Not just love, but by agape love. So our faith should be energized, made alive, brought to life by the love of God. Amen. And if it's not, then it's lacking. If it's not, then we're lacking. And our fire isn't shining. That love isn't shining as bright as it should be. I was reading a scripture. I should have put this in a little bit better order, I guess. Matthew 12, <laughs> 17 through 20. It says, that it might be fulfilled, spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved whom my soul is well pleased. Who is that? Jesus. And, 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 I, and, I, and I mean to say it's you and I today. He chose each and every one of us. He put us together. It was by his choice, not ours, that we're here today. Amen. We, we may like to think it was our choice, but it was God's spirit that drew us right. together yes, amen. to hear about him and to learn about him and to draw nigh to the person. Look at the person next to you and say, I need you. <laughs> Because we do. We need one another to be complete in Christ. We need one another. We need agape love working between us to do what God wants us to do. Verse 19 says, and he shall, oh no, verse yeah, 19 says, he, not, he shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. Verse 20 says, a bruised reed shall he not break, a smoking flax Shall he not quench till he sends forth judgment and the victory? And, and I was thinking about the flax and the reed as being people who are know the truth. They were on fire. They were bright and shining. But life happened. Life happens. Amen. And instead of being strong, life came and, and hit you with a baseball bat and bruised you. Messed things up just a little bit. 
Ever been there? <laughs> and sometimes we were a flash of fire so that all could see. And then all of a sudden life happened and we're just a burning ember. Just a strong, too strong a wind will put the fire out. Amen? And if you hit the bruise too hard, you'll make them fall down. Reading in the scripture, and I'm sure you know it as well, that we should help the hands that hang down. We should do what? Lift them up. And the knees that are weak, grab a hold and strengthen them with agape love so that they don't fail. You see, Christ would come into our life and strengthen us in such a way that would cause us to shine bright again. That would cause us to be the people that He wants us to be. Amen. Bright and shining and strong for Him. The Bible says in the book of Romans that nothing shall separate us from the agape love of God. Not just love. Not just love that people think and we say so many times, I love you. And we're not even realizing the words that we say. You know, it's like that word, friends. We're, we're friends with them. I have 283 friends on Facebook. I probably know three of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're not all my friends, are they? That word's been taken so lightly, and it's just like love. It's been taken so lightly that sometimes it loses its, its luster. It loses its brightness. It loses its fire. But it was the agape love of God that Christ could sit in the sand and draw people to Him. It was the agape love. Jesus said, I come to do my Father's will. I hear Him speak and that's the way I speak. I say what I hear. I'm not talking just because I want to hear myself talk. <laughs> Sometimes we do though, don't we? And that doesn't draw people to Christ. It doesn't draw us even to Christ. But when we begin to hear the Spirit of God speaking to us, and that fire begins to burn in us, it can't help but to draw other people to it because they're feeling. What's so different about them? And hopefully we can say it's the agape love of God burning bright within us, drawing people to Him and not repelling them away. We need to draw people to Christ. Amen? Amen. Paul said, 2 Corinthians 5, 14, For it is the love of Christ, it is the love of Christ that constrains me, that holds me, that, that draws me, that keeps me. It's the love of God. It's the agape love of God. It's the love of God that's a fire. And it constrains me. It holds me tight. It keeps me where I need to be. We all know, I'm sure, 1 Corinthians 13. Amen? What is 1 Corinthians 13? <laughs> Amen. And it says that no matter, no matter how much knowledge I may have, no matter how much I give, no matter how much I give of myself, I could be, give myself to be burned. It doesn't matter if I don't have agape love. Amen. The word translated is agape love. I wish there was a better way to say it after I've studied this. And because so many times we, we get love confused and love gets weak. And we think philia and we think storge and we think this and we think that. And it weakens love. But the agape love of God is so hot and so strong. It will change our lives when we get into the presence of it. I think Moses at the burning bush. The bush didn't burn. And Moses was changed. You see, when we get into the presence of God and we realize how much God loves us, it'll change our lives. It'll change who we are. It'll change what we do. It'll change how we think. It'll change the direction that we go in because of the love of God. 
And sometimes, most of the time, maybe in 2016, I should say all the time, that the people that are around us, that are in our neighborhoods, that are in our own homes, the only way they're going to see the agape love of God is through us. Amen? Amen. And the only way they're going to change, I mean, I can set the, the rules. I can tell my kids, you can't and you can and you can't and don't and do and don't and will. And, but if the agape love of God isn't there, there won't change them, will it? It'll make them resent. We can live it. We have to live it in such a manner that it draws them to Christ. We need to live our lives so it draws people to church. It draws people to us. And to, we can help people when we're drawing them to us. Amen. We can't tell the people the truth. What God's dealt with us that day if there's nobody there. I was preaching a storm out the other day in, in the backyard. And there was nobody there but the rabbits and the birds. I don't think they needed it. They ran away. I said, God, what did I say? And we laugh a little bit, but isn't that what happens sometimes when we tell people about Christ and we don't have really got the fire of God burning in us? It causes them to go away instead of come. Don't you want people to come? Amen. I want people to come. God, help me have agape love. Help me be the one that shines, that draws people to us, right. not away from us. Right. Neither depth nor height. Man, let me just put it in our language. I don't care what life throws at us and I don't care what comes at us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Okay. From the agape love of God. That never changes. Have you ever noticed that your love will change toward people sometimes? <laughs> I used to have a saying, don't tell me that. Don't tell me the bad. Because it'll change my love I have to them and I won't love them the way I should. Now that's pretty good. But you know what? The truth of the matter is, if we have a gut they love, it should never change anyhow, even though no matter what they do, it shouldn't change. And so I said, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm growing. I'm growing. Because I realize how powerful the agape love of God really is. And it doesn't matter if I hear all the bad and the negative. That just gives me something to pray for. Isn't that what Jesus did? It didn't matter what the good or the bad was. He didn't care who, who was standing before me. He prayed for them. It didn't matter if they were sick with leprosy or blindness. If they had a drawn in arm and uh, de deformity. It didn't matter to him. Sometimes we have deformities in our life. We don't want anybody to see. And we hide them. But God knows they're there, and He doesn't care about it. He says, come as you are, and I will change your life. Amen. Because I love you. And my love can be transferred to you. My love can be, the, the agape love of God can be transferred into our life. Because don't we have His Spirit? Amen. Don't we have the Holy Ghost? Amen. So that means that we have Him, and we have a portion or part of that agape love that we need to allow grow in our lives. Amen? Amen. Don't get quiet on me. <laughs> Let the agape love begin to burn in us. Not blow out the, the, the wick. Not blow out the coal. But let that coal breathe on it. Put something else on it. So that it gets hotter and burns brighter. Unto a perfect day. Amen? 1 John 3, 16 and 18 says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because He laid down His life for us, and we ought to do the same. Easy words to say, isn't it? Maybe not so hard to perform. Maybe harder to perform, I should say. How many have children? Amen. What would you do for them? Or maybe I should ask, what wouldn't you do for them? Would you give your life for them? In a heartbeat. Amen. Amen. 
Even if you knew they were wrong and bad and, and rotten like the prodigal son, you'd still give your life for them, wouldn't you? Like the prodigal, like the prodigal son's dad just ran to him and didn't want to hear what he had to say. Just basically said, shut up. I don't want to hear anything you've got to say. I just want to have a party. I want to have a party because you were dead and now you're alive. <laughs> and my love for you hasn't changed. Here, let me change you. Let me give you clean clothes. Let me give you a fresh anointing with the Spirit of God. Let me give you a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let me fill you with fire. Amen. Remember, the Holy Ghost is like, ah, and it's shut up in our bones. And we need to let that fire grow out of us like on a candle and set it on a mountaintop, on a hillside, not under a basket, under the bed. So that everybody could see it. So that everybody could happily feel after that love of God that's in us. But whoso hath this world's goods and seeth his brother have a need and shutteth up his bowel of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? How dwelleth this agape love of God when we run across somebody that we know has a need? And we don't try to help. A lady came in here Thursday night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was she was different. <laughs> and I came out of the fellowship hall and I said, Can I help you? But I said it in, in that, that that way like what are you doing here? You know? You know how you can offer to help somebody that's like, what are you doing here? Like, get out of here? And I caught myself, and I thought about this message, and I said, ma'am, can I help you? Is there something that you need that I can give you? And she looked at me kind of strange. She said, no, I'm just looking around. I buzzed out the door. Church, we need to let people know that we have what they're looking for. They need Christ and we have it to give it to them. Amen? And the only way that we can give it, you've heard the saying, you can catch flies with a little bit of honey, sugar, what is it? Honey? Quicker than you can salt? Vinegar. Vinegar? <laughs> yeah, that. What she said. Well, we need to sweep them. We need to catch ourselves on fire. Flies are not only drawn to honey, they're drawn to the, the, the light too, aren't they? They're drawn to the fire. They're drawn to that bug zapper just as quick as they are honey. And that's what we need to do is allow our lives to be filled with the electricity from God so that it affects the lives of those that are around about us. For God so loved the world that he, he gave. Whatever was needed, we needed somebody named Jesus to pay redemption for our lives, to forgive us of our sins, to pay the price that needed to be paid that we cannot ever afford to pay. That's right. Amen. But Christ paid the price. Amen. 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 He gave what needed to be done. Amen. And church, that's the agape love that we need to be burning bright in our lives that we can do and give what, where it's needed to give so that we can get the work of Christ done. His work was to draw people to God, amen? Not to chase them away. Not to push them away. We go through things in life, Paul told the Romans, that we go through tribulations and we go through all this stuff so that the love of God, I looked it up and the word is agape, not storge, not philia, not eros, but agape. So that the world can see the agape love of God and it gets spread around. So the people can see that more than they can see me. Amen? Amen. We need to get the agape love of God burning right in our lives like never before. 1 John 4, 9 Verse 11, let's just read verse 11. It says, Beloved, if God so loved us, if God had a God love toward us, if God gave everything he had for us, 
If God laid down His life for us, if God would turn water to wine for us, if God would sit you down and feed 5,000 with just scraps, if He could do that for us, then we should do it one for another. We should have a God I love, not just in us, but burning in us. We should have the agape by love so strong in us, it wouldn't judge, it couldn't judge, it couldn't tell somebody, no, <coughs> you're going to hell. It couldn't tell somebody, an adulterous woman, no, you're wrong, you should be stoned to death. It's the agape love that says, you're wrong, but you need to change. Here, your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. Be changed by the agape love of God. Let your life be changed by the agape love of God. Let your life be molded and shaped into what He wants. Not what we want. Let the agape love burn within us. 1 John 5 and 3 says, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. What is the commandment of God? Even John said, it's not a new commandment I give you, it's an old commandment. Love. Love. Love God and love one another and we will fulfill the, all the law. All the law hangs on two laws. Two sayings, two words, two things. Agape, love one another and love God. Agape, love. I keep saying that word because I want to pound it into our hearts and pound it into our minds that we don't, don't say the words, I love you. We show them. We prove it. We, we do it. I don't, I don't think that God may love sits down and says, oh, I love you. And God may love and stand up and say, here, let me wash your feet. Let me heal you. Let me give you what you need in your life. Let me do what you need. Let me be the one that serves. Let that agape love boil out of me into you. I think that's what Jesus wants. I think that's what Jesus wants us to know today. That this agape love is starting to, to dwindle out. 2016 years later, we need to get that fire burning bright so that everybody around us sees it and it affects their lives as much as it affects our life. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you. you see, when we begin to serve one another, you'll change the life of the one you're serving, but I also believe it will change your life as well. Amen. It will affect you as much as it affects them. And I think that's what makes it got their love so powerful is it affects them as much as it affects you. It'll change their life, but it'll change your life as well. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. 1 Peter 1.8 Whom having not seen you what? You love. Excuse me, say that again. You love. You love. Let the church say you love. You love. you love. And having not seen him, you love him. Why? Because of everything he did for us. Amen. He gave us life. He gave us righteousness. He gave us justification. He gave us sanctification. He gave us holiness. He gave us of the spirit. He gave us faith. He gave us life eternal. He didn't just give. He gave his life. So that everything that goes on in my life can be fixed. Amen? Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? He took the beatings so that I wouldn't have to. He took the scourges so I wouldn't have to. He took them pulling his beard out so I wouldn't have to. He did all that so that when I get sick, I can be healed. But when I have a bruise, it can be healed. So that when my fire begins to dim out, he can lighten it back up. And I've got my love of God. I asked somebody the other day, what do you think you held Christ to the cross? 
I didn't know if it was grace or love. That's what I came down to. It's the grace of God he did it, amen? But the more I think about it, I think it was agape love amen. that held him to the cross yes. so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. So that we could have life and more abundantly. Just because we're alive doesn't mean we have life. Just because we breathe doesn't mean we have life. We can have it with, with joy. We can have it with action. We can be up dancing and praising God. We can live life. Not just sit. I've been going crazy the last couple of weeks sitting. And I keep trying to do things I know I can't do. But I keep trying to do them. I can almost put my sock on. Came downstairs this morning all dressed except for one sock and one shoe. <laughs> Sister Linda just looked at me and started laughing. She said, let me help you. That's a agape love. Let me help you. Let me serve you. And that's what we need to do, church. Let me help. Let me do. Let me serve. Let me give. Whatever's necessary. Whatever is possible. Whatever I can do. I looked at Brother Harper the other day and I, I said, I want to do that, but I, I can't. I just can't do that. He looked at me and smiled. He said, I know. I got it handled. <laughs> I said, no, you don't have a clue. You don't understand because you can't just sit there. <laughs> I can't. It drives me nuts. I keep trying to do, move my leg in ways that I can't move it that way. I haven't moved it that way in 50 years. What do you think you're going to do now? Dummy, don't do that. But I keep trying. Because that's the love that God put in me. Not to just sit still, but to do something. I was talking to a friend the other day, and they said, I can't do anything anymore. I said, you don't know how important you are. You don't understand. Your things change in life. Maybe all you can do is pray. But you don't know how important prayer is in somebody's life. You don't understand the confidence that you give somebody when they know that you are praying for them. Can, can I tell you a story? Uh, it's almost time to close. I, I believed that growing up that there was only one person that prayed for me, and that was my grandma. I don't know if you ever have that feeling. <laughs> and then grandma died. She was 95. She prayed for me a long time. <laughs> And I remember the fear that came over me because now I don't have anybody praying for me. I said, God, what am I going to do now? How, what am I going to do if I fail? What am I going to do if I fall? How can I, I don't have her praying for me, God. I'm scared. You ever been there? No? I'll tell you what, it's a terrible thing when you know that nobody's praying for you. Well, when you feel that way, anyhow. But then all of a sudden I got a phone call from Tennessee. And the guy on the other end of the line said, Brother Rick, God told me to call you and tell you that I'm praying for you. You see, you don't understand how powerful prayer is. It can change lives. I got into all kinds of trouble, but my grandma was praying for me, so I knew I'd be all right. <laughs> And I, and I was. What would have happened had I not had that woman praying for me? What would happen to our families if, if we just decided I'm done and I'm done praying? I think prayer is one of the most important parts of our life that we can have. Amen. That's my soapbox. I love prayer. <coughs> but you know what? When you begin to pray for one another, you, you go ahead and pray for me. Pray for all my faults. You probably see them quicker than I do anyhow. <laughs> Pray for me. And you know what will happen to you? You'll fall in love with me. And you know what will happen to me? Those faults that I have will diminish. <laughs> they'll go away. A little at a time. You may have to pray 50 years too, but they'll go away. And that's what we should do. Jesus, when Jesus prayed, it affected people's lives so much that the withered arm was made whole. 
the leper was made whole and the other nine weren't. Why? Because he turned around and said, thank you. And God showed him even more love. I was thinking about the prodigal son. And we started earlier about the prodigal son, but I was thinking about the older son. Well, we've heard hundreds of messages, amen? Okay. What do you think the major problem of the, pro of, the, of the elder son was? Can I tell you what I think? I'm going, I'm going to anyhow. I think he was jealous. Amen. He wasn't. He was jealous. He wanted to see that younger brother in pain, not have a party. He, th he thought dad should have wailed on him, but not loved him. And they have a feast? Oh, no, 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 no. We shouldn't have a feast. There should be a lot of, lot of pain going here. Forget, forget all that good stuff. Don't give him a ring. Give him the cane. Yeah, they used canes back then to... Where's my cane? <laughs> they used canes to beat people with back then. And stones. Surely I wouldn't have been alive today if I lived back then. I thank God I live today. <laughs> Stones still hurt though. Words do hurt. And they can leave bruises. And the more bruises there are on a person, it's going to cause them to go away, not come toward Christ. We need to be careful what we say to one another and how we treat one another. And make sure we treat them with the agape love of God. Amen? Amen. Matthew 17, or 22, 37. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law hang of the prophets. On these two. Without those two, nothing else matters. You can have all 632, one. You can have all 631 laws that Moses wrote. It doesn't matter if you don't have these two. You can change the place where trees go. I want you over here to tree move. It doesn't matter if you don't have the love of God. It just doesn't matter if we don't have the agape love of God. We need the love of God to shine in us. And if we just do that... Everything else will be fulfilled. Right. All the word of God will be fulfilled in our life if we simply love one another. If we simply love the love that God told us to have. Amen. Amen. Galatians 5, 14 says, For all the laws fulfilled in one word. I like these one words. One word. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's one word. I don't know what the symbol for all that is, but that's just one word. Did you know that each commandment was just one word? Just one word. It was the whole commandment one word. And all it really had to do with, the, all the Ten Commandments, if you really just look at them, they had to do with loving God first and loving one another. If we loved one another, we wouldn't be committing adultery. We wouldn't be stealing. We wouldn't be talking bad about it. We wouldn't be stealing their stuff. If we really loved one another, what would we do? Here, let me help you. Let me give to you. Let me strengthen you. Let me bless you. Let me, let me be of some support. We need to support one another. Amen? Amen? And in the days that are coming, we need to support each other even more. We need to strengthen each other even more. We need to help one another even more. Let, let me go ahead and close. Acts 17, 27. How many love the Lord? Amen. How many think we can love Him more? Amen. Amen. They should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Do you notice how he changed the word from them to us? You see, we have to happily feel after him too. There's areas of our life that need to be changed, amen? Yes. 
We need to grow. We need to change. I don't care if I've been in church for 60 years. I still need to change. I still need to grow. I still need to be more like Him. Amen. I'm on my journey. I'm crying with everything I've got. Aren't you? Amen. And along the way, we need to let that fire of God, let that love of God catch on fire and burn within us. And if it consumes us, so be it. We'll shine brighter than everybody. Isn't that what we should do anyhow? Shouldn't we shine brighter than anybody? Shouldn't the fire of God consume us? It won't burn us. It'll be just like that fiery bush. It'll be on fire, but it won't be consumed. It'll just be a light to everybody around. And what did it do? It drew Moses closer to it. And God said, Moses, you got to change. Take off your shoes. You can't come like that. And God did it, church. I didn't do it. God did it. The bright light, the agape love of God shining out of my life caused people to change. It drew people closer. It drew people closer to God so that they would have what they need to have. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand. I want to thank you for being here this morning. I want you to remember...